The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the August 25th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find a gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you can't dial in, but you've got a question, we've got you covered. Go ahead and send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got a slightly mixed bag. Now, that mixed bag is coming from the Dow, which is up 44 points. The S&P is off four. The other is trading to the downside. NASDAQ down 45. Russell's off 11. Semi's 35. Trendies are down 86. Gold's off 12 bucks. Silver's down 10 cents. Lights Recruit is trading up 86 pennies. Natural gas is flat in the 30-year treasury. Down uh, six ticks, trading out at 119.20. Leading the charge, dollar-wise, the upside, you've got Ubiquity, Inc., up 24 bucks, 16%. Vin Fast Auto, 11 bucks or 21%. Hibbit uh, is up 20%, 7 bucks. Shockwave Medical, 6 bucks, 3%. Intuitive Surgical, nearly 2% move there. That's a $5.50 move. The Shakers, you've got Top Build Corp down 5% or 14 bucks. Alta Beauty, 15 bucks, 3 and 6 tenths percent. NVIDIA trading lower by 13 bucks, nearly a 3% move there. Super Microcomputer off 13 bucks, another 5% move. And Broadcom down 12 bucks, 1.5%. We're going to start with what I consider to be the three most important charts for us to watch today. So let's move over to that white background screen out here. You'll see three charts momentarily. One is a weekly chart. The other two are daily time frame charts. The weekly chart, left-hand panel, that is the ES Mini. The ES Mini is testing support. This is a bullish structured weekly profile. A close below the bottom of support, not be well, the low of uh, last week, but the low of that, uh, of, uh, a close below profile support, and that number is at 4377, 437733, so effectively be 437725. Let's just use 4377. We get a close below 4377 today. Odds favor a pullback to a minimum price target of 4154.75. That would be its TD9 count breakout area. So that's the first chart. You've got that number. Put that down on your pad of paper. If we take a look at the euro, right, so it's a U.S. dollar index. We notice it's trading higher. Yesterday it negated its TD9 count top. But yesterday or two, really two days ago, the euro formed a TD9 count bottom. That had held up until Powell started speaking, I believe. And right now, if we get a close below 1.0802, First, the TD9 count pattern will get negated. That will definitely uh, tell us that the U.S. dollar wants to continue to rally because the next price target for the euro, this is the daily time frame chart we're looking at, will be at 1.0696 out there. That's its TD9 count breakout level. The second chart that we're looking for or watching is going to be the Dow. Now, the Dow is up 82 points right now. We can see that it tested its low from yesterday. 
it's not that the low from yesterday is important because it's a low. It's important because it completed a TD nine cal bottom. Price should bounce up to its oscillator and change line. It recently changed colors. That really adds to the to the idea that we should see that bounce up there. Thirty four seven forty eight is the current print. If we close below 34.099, and if we close below 43.77 today, though, this is going to suggest markets want to head lower. In the case of the uh, Dow Equity Future contract, its price target would be down at 33.026. Do I think we need to do anything else today? The answer is no. I think we just uh, we just nipped it in the bud. So let's head out to the golf course. Ah, just kidding. We've got stuff to do, and some of that stuff would be to take a look at your request. We only have one request in the queue right now, so please add more, whether it's sending me an email at steve at tfn.com, calling us at 877-927-6648, or further private pings or public ping, uh, pings inside our Tiger's Den. So those are the charts to be watching. Now we can go start looking at the intraday charts out here. Let's do that. Let's take a look at the intraday charts for the ES Mini. If we take a look at, well, there was this five-minute chart that I pointed out earlier. Let's pull that over here. And uh, Peter in the Tiger's Den said, hey, we finally got some green bars on the five-minute chart for the ES Mini. Well, it turns out that as he was writing that, the ES Mini was completing a five-minute TD nine-count bottom. Now, price is trading above its oscillator and change line. Uh, we've got three minutes left in this session. If price maintains uh, itself by trading above 43.81, then we're likely to see a move up to the bottom of its current profile. Well, I take that back. It's in the current profile. It's already traded above that. Just suggest a further rally. So that further rally price target would then become 44.0875. That's right. You heard it here at 11.12 in the morning. And take a look at just the five-minute time frame chart. Now, do the other charts support that idea? Let's go take a look since we can get rid of this chart. We don't want to get rid of it. We just want to size it down. So if we take a look at a 10-minute time frame, uh, we don't have any kind of a bottoming signal here. Peter, price running into its first level resistance, about 43.89. So in order for the five-minute chart to make that move up into that 44-ish area out there, you're going to have to see it close below above 43.90. If it gets above 43.90, we don't have a bottoming pattern on the 15-minute chart. Its level of resistance, 43.93. No bottoming signal on the 30-minute time frame chart. Price is running into resistance right now at 43. 4384 is a resistance on the 60 minute time frame out here. So it just becomes a bit suspect with regard to that five minute chart that we were looking at. Pay attention now to this 10 minute chart out there because that's the next level of resistance. So we've just had its counter trend move. Well, let's go take a look at what market breadth looks like. Excellent idea. For that, we're going to go ahead and change screen so that this one that I'm on doesn't shut down. If you give me a moment, we'll see a black background screen. And then momentarily, we'll take a look at the 30 minute market breadth for both the ES Mini and the NQ. This is the uh, S&P 500. It is negative market breadth. Let's take a look at the NQ. When I say negative, 273 below profile and 120 above. In the case of the NQ, it's 70 below, 16 above. Okay, so the rally right now, this counter trend move, that's all that it is. It's up against some negative market breadth for the 30 minute time frame. Well, let's not stop there, Steve O. What does it look like for those other four time frames that you monitor? Well, in the case of the SP 500, it's bearish, 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 and bearish. That's weekly, daily, 240 in the 60 minute time frame. And as we take a look at the NASDAQ 100, it's bearish, 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 bearish as all, as, as well. So watch these counter trend moves. Why? Because market breadth is telling you, number one, expect a choppy marketplace. And number two, it is the sellers that have the leverage here. We've got to watch those three charts that you and I took a look at. They will help assist us with regard to what the market's next intent is. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 Days Risk-Free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So, uh, Mr. Bill, uh, appropriately so, inside the Tiger's Den, uh, said it uh, looks like the seasonal pattern for the ES uh, for the S&P 500 might kick in a bit early, he said, before Labor Day. So I've got the 95-year chart up on our screen so that everybody else can see what Mr. Bill is taking a look at. And I've got this detrended. It just uh, helps assist us in identifying the trend a little bit easier out here. Now, uh, what, we, what Mr. Bill is talking about is you typically don't see the S&P 500. It's real seasonal pattern. It's real negative seasonal pattern really begins right around Labor Day. In this case here on average, it's right around the September 6th, 7th uh, time frame out here. And then we head lower into that October time frame, usually towards the end, middle to end of October out there. So that's what he's referring to. And that makes those three charts that we took a look at earlier muy importante. Why? Because if we get a close below the weekly bottom, so Vic asked if we could go over the S&P or the ES Mini once again. Vic, I'm just going to, because I already do, have done that. If we've got extra time, I can go back through it later on. But just simply point out, there's just one number with regard to the ES Mini that you need to be paying attention to, to the downside. And that number is 4377. If you get a close below that, that is then going to trigger a change in trend signal. If you take a look at these blue arrows out there, blue arrows show you this is from a rally from back in March of 2020 up to the high that came in in uh, 2022 out there you can see how all of the buy the dipsters would be at the bottom of those weekly profiles you can also see once that gets cracked as it did here in january of 2022 what that led to was a decline that decline took us lower into when october of 2022 hello what did we just take a look at here we just took a look at the seasonal pattern What's the seasonal pattern do? Typically moves lower into October. Did it in 2022? We'll do it in 2023. Well, we're going to find out. But one of the ways that we're going to find out and make that call is a required weekly close below 4377. 
That's all that we have to pay attention to. On the intraday time period, I was talking about watching the 4387-ish area, which was the 10-minute oscillator and change line. So we just had a little counter trend rally up to a resistance level. That's all that has transpired. As long as I'm on these black background charts out here, we've got the New York Stock Exchange, it's advanced decline oscillator. It's still in the oversold condition. We still have a higher set of lows on the advanced client oscillator, panel number three, with price moving lower in the New York Stock Exchange. This condition needs to be worked off, but it can take a week or so before it sets up the actual pattern for that. But it still needs to be worked off. So it'll be interesting today to see where the actual ES Mini finally closes out there. So Vic, uh, that was just kind of the quick review with regard to the ES Mini, what you need to be paying attention to. Let's continue. We really don't have that many requests out there, so I would love more requests, that's for sure. So give us a call at 877-927-6648. We're inside the Tiger's Den. Maybe you can add a few more requests out there. But let's go to the first one coming in from Dan. Dan wanted to take a look at ticker symbol CELH. So let's go take a look at CELH. We'll get that up on our screen out here. We're going to change screens here momentarily. You'll see these white background screens. Now Dan is short. So we want to go ahead and help him out. See what the, uh, well, first you see what the message of the markets are from my pattern workout here. My pattern work on a daily time frame says that Dan went short yesterday because it formed a bear sash candle that confirmed a Rhodes momentum indicator top. So I, I'm in agreement with you that the daily time frame has generated a topping signal. Now, what you need today, what you need today, what you need today is you certainly want to see it close below that green oscillator and change line. That is currently printing at about 170, uh, I'll tell you what it's printing at, 178.47. So that's the first level to pay attention to. The second level, Dan, is going to be 174.98. 174.98 is the center of its bearish structured profile. Why is that important? Odds favor, especially because of the topping pattern, that if price were to close below 174.98, odds favor that sellers will be able to push price down to support. And support here is 166.28. Dan, in order for this to really get uh, bad to the downside, you're going to need to see it close below that 166.28. The reason that we say that is if you look at the weekly time frame chart, there's nothing bearish about it at all. In fact, if we take a look at it, the swing point for its A to B equals CD did volume of 4.99 million shares. And two weeks ago, it did 13 million shares. This has a confirmed weekly a to B equals CD pattern to the upside. It's going to look like this out here. So there's our A to B. I'll just simply go ahead and move this up to that C point out here. And this says longer term over the long haul. Whoops, I'm going to try to do that. I'm just going to use an approximation right here. That that gets us up in about the 210 area. So don't forget on the weekly time frame, CELF is trading above profiles. It's trading above its green oscillator and change line. And it confirmed two weeks ago an A to B equals CD to the upside. There is no other pattern that is in place out here. Now, if it were to generate a bearish reversal candle on the weekly basis, we could get a confirmed Rhodes momentum indicator top. The monthly time frame chart is all out bullish as well. There's no topping pattern that is in place out here. Uh, it's having a good month. We're trading above last month. So everything is very strong here. So with regard to your short position, I see it. I get it. I get those uh, short-term daily tops out there. Uh, watch those support levels, 174.98, 166.28 out there. I hope that review helped you out. Real quickly here, we could take a look at that 30-minute time frame chart since I don't believe I have much else in the QLK. I see one for XLRE. Let's take a look at the 30-minute uh, time frame chart, see what's going on here. We've got a TD9 count top that took price back to its breakout level of support. It closed below that at 11 a.m. and a second close below 177.14, which suggests lower prices in order. And that lower price target would be 170.43. So that's what I see when I take a look at CELH out there. Dano, I hope that that helped you out and best of luck to you on that trade. Mr. Bill writes in, and you'd like to take a look at XLRE. So let's pull that up and uh, let that populate. I'm going to check for Mr. Bill and see if XLRE is even an instrument covered by the seasonal charts, the folks over at Seasonex. And it turns out the answer is yes. So let's put that up as well. I am going to. So first, let's look at XLRE. And your question is longer term if we've got time. Well, we've got the time. Longer term would have to be the monthly time frame. So on the monthly time frame out here, what do we have? Looks to me like we have a confirmed by the D point. Let's just confirm that out here. Let's draw on the A to B, and we'll just move that 
over to the C point out there. So there's your A to B. Move this over to the C point out here. And yes, we have a confirmed monthly by the D point pattern. Now the issue on a monthly basis out here, with all that to really suggest that price should test resistance levels. Well, in essence, it basically did that last month when price got up towards its oscillator and change line. Didn't hit it exactly. Does it have to hit it exactly? No, it doesn't have to hit it exactly. But still, you've got resistance at 3901 long term and then 3985. That's the top of its new monthly profile out there. So that's what the monthly chart shows us. The weekly chart shows us a consolidation pattern. Right now, I see higher highs and higher lows. If, on the other hand, price were to trade below, the May 26 low of 3504, we wouldn't have those higher lows out there. Um, so that's something to pay attention to. Price is holding support as we speak right now, and that's at 3618. On a daily time frame, is there a bottom pattern? I don't think so. But you. So when I say bottoming pattern, I'm really referring to, is there a confirmed, let's say, A to B equals CD pattern out here? And it looked to me like it hadn't made that move. Eh, close enough, though. So let's gonna go with that's close enough, and it does have a buy the D point pattern. We'll first take a look at the XLRE, the real estate sector, for Mr. Bill inside the Tiger's Den. With rising inflation, rocketing interest rates, a volatile dollar, an uncertain market, there's an asset that all traders flock back to, gold. However, these irregular times also mean a regular gold market, which presents its own unique challenges. This brings up the question, what moves the gold market? This is a question I'll be answering in my next live webinar. On August 30th from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., I'll be hosting a live free webinar for all those who subscribe to my newsletter, The Gold Report. The Gold Report has been in publication for over two decades, and I've seen just about every market gold has been traded in. This experience lends me great insight when trading gold and other mining equities, and now that insight can be yours. On August 30th, I will deep dive into gold, bonds, and the dollar, where they are now, how they affect each other, and what to look for when looking to set up a trade. Additionally, I will provide a comprehensive breakdown of the XAU, HUI, and GDX, as well as cover individual gold equities and answer questions live on the air. Subscribe to the Gold Report today so you don't miss this rare moment in gold. TFNN, educating investors. With rising inflation, rocketing interest rates, a volatile dollar, an uncertain market, there's an asset that all traders flock back to, gold. However, these irregular times also mean a regular gold market, which presents its own unique challenges. This brings up the question, what moves the gold market? This is a question I'll be answering in my next live webinar. On August 30th from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., I'll be hosting a live free webinar for all those who subscribe to my newsletter, The Gold Report. The Gold Report has been in publication for over two decades, and I've seen just about every market gold has been traded in. This experience lends me great insight when trading gold and other mining equities, and now that insight can be yours. On August 30th, I will deep dive into gold, bonds, and the dollar, where they are now, how they affect each other, and what to look for when looking to set up a trade. Additionally, I will provide a comprehensive breakdown of the XAU, HUI, and GDX, as well as cover individual gold equities and answer questions live on the air. Subscribe to the Gold Report today so you don't miss this rare moment in gold. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, uh, folks. So let's uh, finish take a look at the XLRE. Uh, this uh, we so we establish on the monthly base. We've got to buy the D point pattern. On the uh, weekly basis, you actually have a TD nine count bottom that is in place out there. Uh, but we we're just taking a look at where it's currently doing. And on the daily time frame, you do have a confirmed sell the D point that took place when we had this little gap to the upside uh, back a, a couple days ago on August twenty third. So right now, price is trading between support and resistance. Support is down at thirty five seventy six, bottom of its daily profile. Resistance is at thirty six forty six, and it is at uh, 3649. That's the red oscillator and change line. So that's the level that on a daily basis that you want to see price close above to suggest that there is a further rally. Where would that further rally take us to? I'd have to say the 3788 to 3985-ish type area would be those price targets. But first price has got to clear and close above that daily red oscillator and change line. So I hope that helped you out with regard to the XLRE. Thanks so much for taking the time for that request. The next request is to take a look at the GDX. This is for Hector. And Hector is asking the question, was the move this week a false move topside? Excellent question. How are we going to answer that question? Boy, to answer that question, we've got to take into consideration a number of different things. So one of those things could be this. So we've got day number two, likely, of a retracement here. If we take a look at a real bull market out here, this is looking at consecutive moves higher and lower. So if this is a real bull market inside of Goldilocks, now we're looking at the GDX, so we're kind of doing both out here, but both charts are going to show uh, similar patterns. Um, what you should see in the GDX, Hector, Patty, is a bottom that forms either today or on Monday. You can have a two to three day pullback out there. Sure, you can get a four day, but in real bull markets, um, it basically would be a two bar knee jerk reaction low, two or three bars out there. So that's the first thing that we have to look for. We can't answer that today. What we can say, and why is Hector asking that question? Well, because we have two closes above the top of its daily profile. The top of that daily profile was 28.45. And so those two closes suggested that on a daily basis, price was breaking out. But of course, what we needed to also understand is what's simply one of the dance steps for the GDX. Well, at that stage there, those two days above the top of its profile, well, that was really a three bar move to the upside. Markets just don't go up continuously and down continuously it's a little dance that it does out there and uh, so in this case here we should expect and have anticipated that price was going to pull back silver had traded higher for i believe six or seven sessions so that was also suggesting that it would pull back and uh, but is this a false breakout that's the question. Well, right now, price is testing a key level of support, and that's the red oscillator and change line on this daily time frame. So the very first key that you and I should be watching is that level, and that level is 2806. If price closed below 2806, well, we could easily see a third day of price pulling back and price targeting the bottom of its daily profile, and that's at 2751. And at 2751, you have both the bottom and the center of its profile. That is a strong level of support. If you're asking Stevie, where's the best place to take a long position in the GDX? Well, it would likely be a, a 2751. Now, don't use that right to the penny out there, but that would be the level. Now, on a weekly basis, and this is where the GDX has got some problems. First, it negated last week a TD nine count bottom. It blew through that swing point. Now, the swing point we're looking at is June 30th. 101 million shares traded. Last week, when it blew through, there was 81 million shares. So it's lighter volume. But if you take a look at the bounce this week, it bounced up to that low of that TD nine count pattern, that low being 28.76, and it bounced up towards the bottom of its weekly profile. And that number is 29.12. So at this stage here, what the GDX has for its weekly time frame is actually an A to B equals CD to the downside. Now it hasn't confirmed it with volume, but because it's trading below key support levels out here, well, you've got to pay attention to it. What would be the confirmation? I'm trying to grab this so I can do There we go. So I can do the A to B equals CD. So this has a one-to-one -one price projection in the 2533 level. Well, turns out that if price closes below the low of August 21st, that's a hammer candle. That is at 2728. Then I would say this A to B equals CD to downside in the weekly time frame is going to come to fruition out there. On a monthly time frame, the GDX, which had traded above the top of its monthly profile for one, two, three, four, five months, this could be month number six. It's not over just yet, but right now we're back inside there. That's not a great thing. 
So is was this week's move in the GDX a false breakout to the upside? I've given you the data that we have to watch and pursue out here, at least with regard to the GDX. The other data that we most certainly have to take a look at is what's going on inside of the U.S. dollar index and its relationship to gold and the GDX. We took a look at those charts earlier. Whoops, that wasn't it. It was, oh, I think I turned them off. Uh, oh, it's right here. And that is that I'm not showing the U.S. dollar index here. Uh, but that negated its TD9 count top. And right now we've got the euro looks like it's going to negate its TD9 count bottom. If it does that, that's going to put more strength inside the U.S. dollar index. If it puts more strength inside the U.S. dollar index, we're likely to get a pullback inside of gold. If we're going to get a pullback inside of gold, we're likely to get a pullback inside of the GDX as well. In the case of the Japanese yen, the Japanese yen is moving higher as in this chart it moves higher that puts more strength into the u.s dollar so right now you've got the euro putting strength in the u.s dollar you've got the yen putting strength in the u.s dollar and the yen's chart is very bullish and if price closes below the td9 count bottom on the euro 1.082 it'll be very bearish and if we take a look at the great british pound it is bearish out there it negated us by the d point pattern as the great british pound moves lower the us dollar index is going to move higher so what we can say here is there's trouble in river city and that river city well that's over in europe it doesn't matter whether you're in uh, uh britain or whether you're in the rest of Europe. Doesn't matter whether you're trading euros or pounds out there. In fact, if you're over there on vacation, you're loving today's move because your US dollar has just gotten a little bit stronger. So I think also, Hector and everybody else that's listening, we've got to take into consideration what's going on inside the currency pairs. Why do we have to do that? Well, we have to do that simply because of the current directional correlation that exists. Gee, Stevie, that sounds like a lot of words out there. What the Sam heck does that mean? Well, the same heck there that that means is if we look at this chart. Now, this is the ES mini and the U.S. dollar index. So I'll just leave this up for a moment. The top chart is U.S. dollar index. Center part chart is the ES mini. Bottom chart is the correlation over a five-day period of time. Right now, with regard to the ES mini, in the U.S. dollar, I'd say it primarily, not, not you know, what would we say, 80% out here is a daily time frame, at least about 80% directional correlation. So if the U.S. dollar index, inverse correlation, I should say, if the U.S. dollar index is going to go higher, we should see the ES mini head lower. So we have that real important uh, key support area, the weekly profile level. Okay, so if the U.S. dollar index is headed higher, which the euro, the yen right now, and the pound are saying that's going to unfold out here, what's the correlation look like with regard to the U.S. dollar index? And let's put up the GDX. Yeah, let's just put up the GDX. We can do that. And then we can also put up gold. But let's put up the GDX first because that's what's going to pop up. Let me get down here to the bottom panel as well. Let me change that to the GDX. So we've got the proper correlation going. And when we take a look at this correlation, now this is for a five day period of time. <laughs> What's kind of interesting here is over the last about 20 days, it's had a positive direction, a, 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 a directional correlation. They both move higher or lower at the same time. But overall, if you take a look at all those other bars out there, it's primarily an inverse relationship. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So we're trying to answer the question for um, for Hector inside the Tiger's Den. Joe also sent in a uh, uh, an email request. He's long. The uh, Junior Nugget is asking, you know, should he stay with it? Now, the one thing I've got, I put up here the, the chart for gold, so that you can just to finish this off. So you got the U.S. dollar up top. You've got gold below. And I want you. This is a five-day correlation that we're taking a look at. So on average, over the past ten days. What we can see is it has had a directional correlation versus the inverse. What I have shared with you many times is that when gold really gets rolling out here, we're going to see the U.S. dollar index move higher. We're going to see the equity markets move higher, and we're going to see uh, Goldilocks move higher as well. I don't know that we're there just yet, but that's what we're kind of looking for out there. So how are we going to best answer that question? I think you've got to... Um, I think we've got to just say at this stage here, expect a two to three day pullback. That is normal out there. If we get more than that, um, then we're going to have to come back and take a look at it. Let's go to our next request out there. We'll take a look at the junior nugget for uh, Joe in just a moment. But the next request came inside the Tiger's Den. I apologize. I overlooked it. But Mr. Bill, my wingman out there, let me know that somebody requested both Microsoft and Apple. I'm going to assume that might be Nancy out there. But could be wrong. With regard to Microsoft, what we have out here is nothing more than a consolidation with inside its uh, daily profile. And so that support zone is at 318.23 and resistance up at 324.92. Now, this um, is not that. So that's on the daily time frame. The weekly time frame suggests that what price wants to do is get back to 307.59. Why does Stevie say that? Looks like this will be week number three below the bottom of its weekly profile. No bottoming signal there. A more bottoming signal could be getting back to breakout support at 307.59. Now, if that's going to happen, what we need to see is price to get below 317.33. 317.33. And that's not much of a difference between 317.33 and 307.59. But right now, the monthly chart is testing support. So we're at support between 317.33 and 318.23. That's the bottom of the daily profile, 317.33 or so was its monthly oscillator and change line. So overall, daily consolidation, the monthly chart that says I want lower price, and the, monthly, uh, the weekly chart says I want lower price, and the monthly says, um, yeah, Maybe you do, but I'm not sure I want to let you do that. Let's go take a look at the next chart. And that was um, 
By the way, this will be day number two, likely to be day number two to the downside for Microsoft. We take a look at its consecutive moves higher and lower out there. So if it is going to form a bottom, it should do that at day's end, or we should see a little bit of a rally on Monday out there. Let's look at your next request, which was to look at Apple. And with regard to Apple, what is it doing? Well, first, with regard to profiles, it is trading below the bottom of its daily profile out there. So not a very good thing. The bottom of that daily profile is 178.13. What has helped? though is 175.31 and that is the bottom of its weekly profile now as we take a look at apple you know what i'm going to do here is I'm, it's going to be easier to shift this to the other set of charts but let me just finish this set of charts out here i mean the black background charts because i wanted myself to look at something um, so here on the, when I take a look at the monthly time frame chart, it's very possible we will get a confirmed Rhodes momentum indicator top. Now, that being said, price remains above resistance or at least one resistance level, and that's the top of its monthly profile, 168.79. Now, what I want to do, or we're going to do, so we're going to change back to the black background screen. I'm going to put up the chart for Apple on a weekly basis. It's not this chart right here. It'll be one of the three time frames. Let's open this up. Let's go take a look at Apple, AAPL. And what I'm looking for is does Apple give us that same kind of signal that the ES Mini has with regard to when it closes below a weekly profile line? So let's take a look at coming off of a rally out here from back in the uh, – yeah, no, I can't really say that. Because we have a nice rally that started back in 2019. We had breaks of that uh, level of the uh, bottom of profile in March of 2020. Yes, I don't can't really say that. So that I just answered the question that I wanted to answer. And so, therefore, I, I don't need to share you with uh, uh, with uh, with useless uh, data, even though if you were listening to me speak to myself, you'd say, well, geez, that sounds like a little bit of useless data. All right. Let's go take a look at uh, silver for G-Man inside the Tiger's Den. Let's take a look at the SLV and we'll put up the charts for the SLV. But if you're looking for a long trade to, in silver, which he is, uh, we're going to go look at the silver charts first. So now when we take a look at silver, what do we know out here? Well, on a monthly basis, prices trade above the top of, you know what, let me just see if I can pull up September here. I don't know if it's got an update or not, but let me just try. Is a continuous contract always, yeah, it's just not enough data. So sorry about that. So I'm gonna have to go back to the continuous contract out here. What we know is prices trading above its green offset and change line. So that is a bullish indication. On a weekly basis, well, price is running into resistance at the bottom of its weekly profile. If this is only a counter trend move in silver, price would find resistance at 24.77. On a daily time frame, this had a nice TD9 count top. This is likely going to be day number two with a move lower out there. If that's all that transpires, then today is your day to take a long position inside of silver. You don't see the silver chart? Thank you. Sorry. 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 Change windows. Okay. Now you're going to see the silver charts. Let me just make sure. Yeah. So now you see the silver charts. Here's the monthly. Price above that green oscillator and change line. Bullish. Weekly. Price run into resistance, the bottom of its uh, weekly profile. And it's a bullish structured profile, which price has been below for more than a couple weeks. So that resistance loan zone about 24.77. Here on the daily time frame, you can see the TD9 count bottom. You can see how price test and rejected that level. We're above profile areas. This could be day number two with regard to pullbacks. It's just a two-day knee-jerk reaction low so it's possible now if this were to be a low what we would see or should see is some kind of bottoming signals on the intraday time periods out here i don't really have that on a 30 minute time frame that's the shortest time frame that i have here so you're looking for an entry price i'm looking at these other intraday charts out there just see what kind of signals we have so not too much there to be worried about so let's go dive down just a little bit deeper with regard to silver let me close this chart out let me go back to the charts that uh, will give us uh, the shorter term time frames as well. We're probably going to see the ES mini or the NQ up there first, but we'll change that momentarily. Yeah, so we've got the ES up there, but let's change this to silver. We've got the September contract that we're trading. And I just want to see what's going on on the real intraday charts. That would be a 10 and a 15 minute chart out there because when price is going to make a bottom, let's say, say if this is a two bar knee jerk reaction low, we should see some kind of bottoming signal on an intraday chart. Oh, that was you, Mike, in uh, in Florence, one of Microsoft and Apple. So uh, 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 thanks for the request. Sorry that I'd overlooked them uh, at the uh, beginning. Now, with regard to silver, just looking for some kind of bottom signal or pattern on the 15 or the 10 minute basis. Do we have it? And the answer is we do not. So that just makes it slightly difficult. So the only thing that I would have for you in silver 
uh, is, at least at this stage here, is that um, if we get a pullback in real strong bull markets out there, it's basically a two-bar knee-jerk reaction. So I think, uh, I don't recall what what trade you were trying to put on there in, uh, in the SLV, uh, G-Man. I think it was a longer-term trade out there. That is really the best that I've got. I've exhausted all my resources out here, and I would just say the only bottoming signal that I can find for you right now in silver, I'll put up the SLV charts, is just simply the two-bar knee-jerk reaction low out there. When I take a look at these SLV charts, we'll get those up on our screen right now. That was Microsoft. That wasn't it. Let's try this one. This tab ought to have it. Here it is, the SLV. And on a daily basis, you could say, okay, it's testing that gap to the upside on lighter volume. That was 25 million to the upside so far today. Oh, geez, you've done 13 million shares. Shoot. I don't have any further information for you, G-Man. That's the best that Stevie's got. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Dow's up 120, S&P's up 6, NASDAQ's down 15, Russell's off uh, 2 points, semis down 27, Tranny's off 66 points. Expect and anticipate a rocky market, a choppy market. Why? 
because market breadth for the daily, the weekly, the 240, and the 60 minute time frame is still negative for both the ES mini, the S&P, and the NASDAQ 100. We're taking a look at charts here for the uh, junior nugget. This is for Joe, who went long this morning. His question is, should he sell or should he bail? Here's what I would do, Joe. I don't know what your uh, where your entry was or what have you, but as long as what price has done, it's pulled back and it's tested that red oscillator and change line out there at 29.18. So I would say if price stays above that, you would not have a good reason to sell. If price closes below that, that would at least tell you that price is headed back to the 2775 level. On a 30 minute time frame, we're just trying to figure out what's the odds of that happening out here. On a 30 minute time frame, we've got a road momentum indicator top, price below profile levels, no bottom pattern, and it's breakout area 2868. What are the odds? Um, at this stage here, they seem pretty good. Uh, but those are the parameters. And much like I struggled a bit with regard to is it time to take a long position in silver? We looked, looked at the GDX. There's nothing different here with regard to the junior nugget. So hopefully the overall conversation uh, was helpful to you. But uh, you're already in. I'd stay in unless I see price close below 29.16. Then I would expect and anticipate a move to 27.75 out there. So lastly, I think we finish this off by going back to the ES Mini. And uh, we'll put up those charts here and uh, take a quick peek. What do we have on the five-minute chart? So we had a TD9 count bottom that identified the bottom or a bounceable bottom inside the ES Mini. Even though it shows a TD9 count, it's not a TD9 count top. Why? Because that high came in on bar number seven, so it doesn't qualify. Right now, what price is doing in the ES Mini, just on an ultra five-minute basis, is testing a very key level of support. If this level holds, this is at 43, let's call it 43.8850. 4388. Let's just call it 4388. Price closed below 4388. We're likely to see a move back towards the 4369 level out there. Folks, have a fantastic weekend, a fabulous Friday. Thanks for joining me here and uh, have a have a just a great weekend. Be safe out there, and I'll look forward to seeing you on Monday, 11 o'clock sharp. Take care, folks.